Tonight's story is Bedtime Routine by Simon Rochford, read by Aaron Monaghan. I've just come into my bedroom to get undressed for bed. My sweaty clothes will have to be thrown back into my light brown wooden wardrobe at the entrance to my room. Although my wardrobe door is barely hanging on by only one hinge and my clothes are all messed up inside it, I can't help but think that it's a good bedroom for a 13-year-old fella like me. It's almost impossible to see the white painted walls as they are, along with every piece of furniture covered in huge posters of all my favourite heavy metal bands, action movies and wrestlers. I spend a vast amount of time just staring at these heroes and icons. To be as talented as the lead singer of Guns N' Roses, to be feared like the Terminator, or maybe even to be as strong as Hulk Hogan, the ultimate wrestling champion. It is stood here where most of my daydreaming takes place. On the other side, I've even got my own TV and video player on the desk. I have an impressive collection of comics, wrestling magazines and videotapes. Then, sitting on top of my wooden chest of drawers, beside the dirty fishbowl where Goldie swims in the green, murky water, is my CD and record player. I have a weird taste in music, according to my friends. It ranges from heavy metal and Motown to reggae and punk. I have a lot more stuff than most of my friends and the other kids in the estate. Lucky me. My single unmade bed with a flowery design bed cover is positioned in the far corner of the room, next to and just under the weather-glazed window, which is half covered by off-white net curtains. I'm exhausted after a tough night of -of tug-of-war training, which usually involves me trying to pull and tug heavy weights up a double wooden beam. These weights are always too heavy. I struggle every week, but I do it to try being tough in front of my friends and being one of the lads. I don't like regular sports as I'm not very good at them. Thankfully, this isn't as obvious to the large tug-of-war group of boys. As usual, training has left me exhausted and I can't wait to go asleep. At this stage, I'm starting to get an itch on the back of my legs, behind my knees. I can feel it through my jeans. It has been there all day, like every day, but manages to get worse at night time. As I get to the bed, I pull back the duvet, and upon taking a glance down at it, I let out a big sigh of defeat, as the familiarity of the sight fills me with dread. Before I start to get undressed, I look at the bed sheets with disgust, as they are riddled with dry, flaky skin, scabs small blood stains, and even dry brown stains. I say softly to myself, Jesus Christ, ma, followed by a single tut. I open my belt, and as my jeans come off, I can't help but scratch the itching at the back of my legs. I continue to undress, taking my jumper off to find the itching has spread quickly to my chest, back and arms. As I'm standing here in just my underpants and socks, I catch a glimpse of myself in the mirror over my desk. I look like some kind of elastic monkey, the way I'm wriggling my arms around my upper body, scratching like crazy and pulling a scrunched-up facial expression. The sight of it makes me stop. I take a deep breath, as I know I have to take my socks off next. With a cruel look of pain on my face, I continue the routine of undressing. The same little brown stains that are on my bed sheets are on my plain white socks too. I whisper to myself as I pull them down slowly, Please, please, please. I'm saying this to both my feet and my socks, as if they are a working unit and their goal is to stop hurting me. The socks are stuck to my skin from my constant scratching of my feet all day. I had broken through the skin, and the blood and pus that had emerged from my wounds was now bonded with the material of my cotton socks. I make several attempts to bypass the pain of ripping my socks off quickly, but it doesn't help. The feeling is more excruciating than pulling a plaster off an open wound, With one eye closed and another open, I sneak a peek at the little progress I've made and it makes me cringe. 
I can see a tiny piece of my flesh encrusted on the inside of my sock and the exposed area on top of my foot left looking raw. I stopped for a moment to take a break. I began to think about how the vigorous itching up and down my body is a nice distraction. I scratch away to my heart's content, even though I know I shouldn't be doing it. Ah, just leave it and get into bed, I say to myself, and follow through with my own command. Now I'm lying in my bed, socks still on, looking all around my room in a scared manner, debating with myself whether to leave the light on or turn it off. After a brief scan of the room, yet again, I got up, turned the light off and returned to bed. Just as I did, I mumbled to myself, Please let me go asleep quickly. I soon feel the awkwardness and the uneasiness of all the scabs and flakes of dead skin on top of my sheets, which are now lying under my bare body. It almost feels like sleeping on a combination of jagged pieces of tin foil and biscuit crumbs. But not only that, it reminds me over and over again of the utter state my poor skin is in. I can't help it. I begin to scratch my legs and behind my knees. Now it's spread to my wrists and feet. Here I am, lying in bed alone, in the dark, rubbing the skin of both wrists together up over my forehead. The dry skin is falling onto my face like snowflakes. I rub my sock-covered feet up and down against one another, and over and under each foot, trying hopelessly to rid myself of the itching. The sounds are like a saw tool, repeatedly cutting through wood. Although I'm a virgin, and have never done anything more than just kissing a few girls, the routine of my scratching has me letting out words like Ah, yeah, and Ah, oh, in a pleasurable tone of voice. I let out a phrase that I've heard numerous times on TV and in movies. Ah, that's better than sex. The whole time I have an orgasmic look on my face. The pleasure of scratching was too tempting and I didn't care what the consequences would be afterwards. Unfortunately, when all the dry skin had been scratched away and the top layer of brief false pleasure was gone, I could feel the pus or weep, as my ma called it sometimes, starting to come out and onto my fingertips. I felt it on my wrists, where huge patches of skin were now gone, and all that was there was the meat underneath. Although I couldn't exactly see this in the dark, I knew well the familiar feeling. The stink from the ripped skin was awful, as was the amount of dead skin cells caked under my long fingernails. I started to cry uncontrollably and tried my best to be quiet in my sobbing as I was both hurt and embarrassed. My parents reminded me numerous amount of times that crying is for weaklings. I didn't want my ma in particular hearing me cry and coming into the room to give me an earful making me feel even worse if that was possible. It was time to pray to Holy God who I believed was there to help. With a fragile sigh, I began, Please, God, come down and help me. I'm begging you, please. Why are you doing this to me? What have I done? I begin to cry heavy, with tears falling from my clenched eyes. I quickly try to calm myself down so I could continue. All I want is to be a normal person with normal skin. I don't want to have eczema. Please make me ma buy me the special cream for my skin in the chemist, please. All the while, my hands were clasped together in a begging manner, and my face wrenched with pain, discomfort and sadness. I bleed and hate me ma, she's a bitch. She won't get me the cream, or even take me to the doctor down the road. She'd rather spend the money on her cigarettes that she loves more than me, or in the smelly pub. I took a deep breath and continued with a whisper. I hate this feeling. Make her change my bed sheets for me tomorrow, please. I can't live like this any more. I wish it was someone else, or at least had a different ma that cared about me. Then, clasping my hands tighter, I give my final request. 
I beg you, holy God, please kill me. Don't let me wake up like this in the morning. Please, please. I tried turning to one side, but was unable to, because the sheets had begun to stick to my skin already because of the pus. This was faster than normal, so I had no option but to keep lying flat on my back, with my legs close together and knees facing upwards, the sheets tucked in between them. It looked like I was pitching a tent. This helped to soak up the pus. I didn't mind the blood at all. That dried up pretty quickly, and never really made the sheets stick to my skin. It was the pus and weep that really caused the discomfort and irritation. It was watery, yet sticky like soft glue, and when it hardens, it resembles tiny brown crystals. In the morning, the sheets would be stuck to my legs, like the socks were to my feet. I reminded myself to fall asleep quickly, and to get the thoughts and feelings about my skin and eczema out of my head. I started to play a game in my mind, imagining the feeling of having someone else's skin and being able to walk around with the fresh feeling. My hands began to itch and I scratched at my skin ever so slightly. It was a force of habit now. I said to myself almost out loud, Stop, will you? Cop on! I took a deep breath and let out an even bigger sigh. Then, after a few minutes... I began to get the brief, floating images in my mind. They were the preludes to the coming dreams. Now I finally had a genuine smile spread across my face. I knew some peace and rest was coming. I continued to smile with a warm feeling until I managed to drift off to sleep. <laughs>